In this video, I'm going to look at the reactions of amino acids. The three reactions I'm going to look at are the reactions with acids, with alkalis, and with alcohols. So we'll start by looking at the reactions of amino acids with acids. So we think about the functional groups in the molecule. We've got the amino group. Now this is a base group. And if we remember, this has got a lone pair on the nitrogen. And that will enable the NH2 group to accept a proton. So this part of the molecule is a proton acceptor. And if you remember, if we have an H plus ion from an acid, then this pair of electrons will form a dative covalent bond with the H plus ion. And that would result in the formation of a positively charged ion like the one drawn up here. And you can see I've used an arrow there to indicate the date of covalent bond between the nitrogen and the H plus as it was. So we'll do a specific example now. So the amino acid on the board is alanine. So all I've done is I've changed the R group to CH3. So this is alanine. And you can see I've written up there alanine plus hydrochloric acid. So if you want to have a think about what the product of that reaction would look like. So hydrochloric acid is effectively H plus ions and Cl minus ions. The nitrogen on the amino group has a lone pair. That's going to accept this proton. So we're going to get this date of covalent bond formed and that would become positively charged. And the chloride ion would, would be there as well. And so we would get this product here. So that is actually a salt. We'll just think, well, why is that classed as a salt? You can see I've written up the definition of salt on the board there. So that's when the H plus ion of an acid is replaced by a metal ion or an ammonium ion. So if I just cover the Cl minus ion for a moment, this is actually an ammonium ion. And so if you think about it, there's the acid that used to be HCl. But the H+, plus, because it's incorporated in this ammonium ion, this is effectively replaced that H+, plus, and so it does fit the definition. So this is a salt. So we'll move on now to the reaction of amino acids with alkalis. So I've just got the general formula there back, and I'm specifying the alkali as sodium hydroxide. So which part of the molecule can react with an alkali? Well, it's not going to be this part because this is a base. It's this part here, the carboxylic acid part. So if we go right back to basics, first of all, the carboxylic acid can react with an alkali and it will make a salt and water. So how does it do that? This part here is an acid. This is a proton donor, and so this H plus will come off, will be donated, and it will leave behind a negatively charged ion. So that H plus now has been donated. So what have we got in the alkali? Well, we've got the sodium ion and the hydroxide ion. So remember, salt, we've just defined salt when the H plus ion of an acid is replaced by a metal ion or an ammonium ion. Well, it's a metal ion in this case. And so we get this salt here. And hopefully you can appreciate that this hydroxide ion and this H plus ion will actually combine to form a water molecule. Now you can see I'm showing the charges there on the negative and positive ions. You don't have to do that. So that would be fine as well. If I just move that a bit closer, that would be okay. But what's not okay is if you connect them like that. Because what you're saying is 
the sodium and the oxygen are connected by a covalent bond and that is not the case so let's just correct that to there so we'll finish with the reaction of amino acids with alcohols now so you can see on the top left there I've written eg glycine with methanol so I'll very quickly just need to change this general structure into glycine that's where the R group is just an H so how does this react with an alcohol such as methanol well what part of the molecule is going to react it's this carboxylic acid part so if you remember carboxylic acids can react with alcohols to form an ester and water so there's the word equation written up carboxylic acid plus alcohol makes ester and water and just a reminder this is a reversible reaction it needs heat and you also need a strong acid catalyst so I would normally say concentrated sulfuric acid as a catalyst so how does the reaction happen well if I draw the alcohol sort of backwards if you like just to show the functional groups facing each other and then you can see clearly what's going to happen we're going to lose a water molecule and then we're going to join this part here to this C double bond O and make the ester and obviously that's there's the water there so we'll finish the video with this I've got the amino acid serine and I'm telling you that the R group is CH2OH so can you have a go at writing the formula or the structure of the product of the reaction of serine with potassium hydroxide, serine with nitric acid, and serine with propantool? So if you have a go at that, pause the video and then I'll go through the answers. So the first one, potassium hydroxide with serine. Potassium hydroxide is an alkali. It's going to react with the acid part of the amino acid and so we're going to get salt and water so the salt that's formed is going to be that negatively charged ion and the positive ion in this case would be K plus so that would be the structure of the product of reaction one you'd also get a water molecule produced in that one so reaction two now we've got nitric acid so the acid is going to react with the base part of the amino acid remember there's a lone pair on this nitrogen that's going to accept that proton so this will become NH3 plus and the leftover the remainder of that is a nitrate ion and so we're going to get NO3 minus as well so we'll get that there and then the final one you can see I've drawn a probe and two all this way around it's got the functional groups facing each other and I'm going to take off the OH and an H to get my water molecule which means that the ester will look like that.